In this video, I'll be reviewing the latest product from Jawakli. I hope I'm saying that right. But first, some context. Back in December, I ordered the RayQ dock for the M4 Mac Mini. Early January, I reviewed it, followed by other videos that filled in the gaps in my first video. The review got lots of attention, including from manufacturers of competing products. About three weeks ago, Jawakli reached out to me and asked if I wanted to review their dock. It sounded different enough from the RayQ dock that it might be interesting. And having used my M4 Mac Mini on its dock for the past three months, I have something to compare it to. Full disclosure is called for here. I was offered this dock if I would review it. I am going to give you my honest opinion of this dock, whether or not I like their dock, and whether or not Jawakli likes my review. I aim to publish only my honest, fair, and unbiased opinion. Let's get into it. Sometimes packaging can be impressive, almost luxurious, and there's nothing wrong with that. But whatever packaging you get, you paid for it at the expense of something else. The difference is that you use a product often, and you use its packaging once. Looking at how the Jawakli M4 Mac Mini Dock is packaged, this unboxing is not much more than an unbagging, and I'm okay with that. I'd much rather get a better product in boring packaging than a satisfactory product with tons of packaging I'm going to throw out or recycle. I can't help noticing the brand name Jawakli is not featured on the packaging. I'm going to hazard a guess that this product may become available with different brand names. The box identifies the accessory as a stand and SSD enclosure rather than a dock. Is there a fundamental difference? There may be. The blurb on the back tells us this unit has a total of three USB Type-A version 2.0 ports, a 3.5mm audio jack, a USB Type-C version 4 40 gigabits per second port, and a place for one M.2 NVMe SSD. The model number is shown as MC60-U4, which is a number I've seen before on a strikingly similar product branded Colori. What we find is a stand and base made out of aluminum. There is an opening for the Mac Mini's on-off switch, yay, and there are anti-skid feet to support the Mac Mini. The compartment for the SSD is covered by a door on the bottom of the unit. There are more anti-skid feet on the bottom as well. The compartment door is affixed with a pair of screws. On the front are a pair of LEDs in the same style as the LED on the M4 Mac Mini. One LED is labeled 40 gigabits per second, the theoretical top speed of USB 4.0. The other LED is labeled 10 gigabits per second, the theoretical top speed of USB 3.1. Let's look at what else is in the box. We have a very, very short cable to the Mac Mini. Very short. A very small Phillips screwdriver. flathead screwdriver and some thermal pads and this is the screw to hold in the SSD. My quick start guide. The USB ports are not designed for charring. Charging. They're not designed for charging. They're only for device syncing. It's very basic. Okay, let's get to it. Let's connect up the dock and see what the Mac says. When I choose system report in About This Mac, I can see the internal USB hub and sound chips are both recognized by the system. The hub chip was made by Fresco Logic. The headphone adapter was made by Realtek Semiconductor. Now let's install the SSD. The SSD I'm using is one terabyte Samsung drive that I got a few years ago. 
It wasn't too bad, but I'm sure there are faster drives today. But this is the only spare SSD I have on hand right now. To test the read and write speeds, I'll use Blackmagic Speed Test. The data transfer rate between the M4 Mac Mini and the dock should be at USB 4 speeds. That is a theoretical maximum of 40 gigabits per second, which is about 4.8 gigabytes per second. But first, I have to make absolutely sure that Blackmagic is set to the correct drive, in this case, Macintosh external SSD. I ran the test a bunch of times to get a reliable number. Note that I've moved the decimal so the numbers represent gigabytes per second and rounded to get rid of meaningless precision. The results show that I'm getting a bit more than two-thirds of maximum theoretical speed. Some people will say that's pitiful, other people say it's great. I will reserve comment. One thing I noticed about the dock after running these tests is that it runs warm to the touch. Should it have a fan to keep it cooler? It's certainly a thought that crossed my mind. Let's compare the speed of this SSD in the RayQ dock. A quick reminder here, the RayQ dock connects to the M4 Mac Mini at USB 3 speeds, or a theoretical maximum of 10 gigabits per second. So we should not be surprised if the RayQ dock is much, much slower. Once again, I'll run Blackmagic speed tests, making absolutely sure the program is set to the correct drive. The maximum theoretical speed of USB 3.1 Gen 2 is about 1.28 gigabytes per second. The read and write speeds are about 70% of theoretical and are less than one third of the USB 4 speeds of the Jawakli dock. But what about Wi-Fi? Many docks for the M4 Mac Mini, including docks from well-known manufacturers, are known to interfere with Wi-Fi. Let's see what this dock does and compare it to the RayQ dock. I know what you're going to say, that my internet is slow. Yes, I have Rogers to thank for that. Nevertheless, we can look at the delta, if any, in the speeds. And for that, I'm going to use fast.com. To get a realistic internet speed measurement, I did all the tests within a few moments of one another and did them a bunch of times to get an average. With the Jawakli dock connected and the SSD inside it, the average Wi-Fi speed was about 33.6 megabits per second. With the same location and placement of the RayQ dock, my Mac Mini's internet speed was 66.8 megabits per second, or almost twice the speed. Let's see if that means anything by testing the Mac Mini alone with all docks disconnected and not even nearby. I got these same results when I tried these speed tests back in December. Same location, same router, same internet provider. I found that the Wi-Fi speeds with the RayQ dock were actually higher than the Mac Mini by itself. I have two explanations. Either my internet speed is so inconsistent that I would have to average many more speed measurements, or the RayQ dock is actually helping my Wi-Fi reception, and the Jawakli dock really doesn't make any difference at all. Let me know what you think in the comments. I really wanted to say that one product or the other was the best choice, and that's simply not true. Which one is best depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for an enclosure with top SSD speed, the Jawakli dock with its USB 4 host connection vanquishes the RayQ dock, hands down. This isn't a surprise, it's a pleasure. Suppose you had your home folder on an external SSD mounted in this dock. It would be light years better than the same SSD in the RayQ dock. But I don't do that. I use the external SSD as a time machine backup. Backups rarely take more than a minute and I don't notice them because they occur in the background or when I'm not watching. If you're looking for connectivity, then the RayQ dock is better. No comparison. With the video output, USB-C and card readers, it's just so much more useful. However, if you already have this connectivity provided in a separate device, the next reports in the dock are of no benefit. Incidentally, if you have a dock and you can't get it to activate the headphone jack, I have a video for that. Here. In my setup, there seems to be some effect on the speed of Wi-Fi when using this dock. But since my Wi-Fi speed is so pathetically slow, I don't notice it. In case you're wondering, I think that's a bad thing. As I mentioned in my original review, I like ports to point backwards so I don't see a mess of cables on my desktop. In this respect, neither dock excels. They both have a substantial number of ports facing forward towards me where I don't want to see them. If these docks are supposed to look sleek, then their fronts shouldn't look like a minefield. The Jawakli dock feels like a decorative stand for a computer with an SSD enclosure and a couple of ports thrown in for good measure. The RayQ dock feels like a hub that happens to fit neatly under and match a computer. In terms of price, they're both comparable if you shop around. In terms of customer service, commenters have had a lot to say about RayQ's customer service and support. 
And while that was not my experience, many of their comments were unfavorable. I have no experience and know nothing about Joaquin's customer service and support, but it's certainly something to keep in mind. Like insurance, you hope you'll never need it, but when you do, you want it to be second to none. What I fail to understand is why RayQ, Joaquin, Sateki, Oracle, and others have failed to bring to market what users have been clamoring for. That is, a dock that operates at Thunderbolt speeds, not USB speeds, to match the Mac Mini, and provide a decent number of ports. Period. Whichever dock you go with, you need to consider which features are most important to you. The ones that are going to streamline your workflow, boost speed, manage clutter, or whatever are your priorities. This device is capable and well worth considering. I hope you enjoyed this video from Ms. Brown's Basement. Please check here often to see which new videos have come out. Please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you again soon.